Welcome back. My name is Levi from Creekside Interactive or Paper Plane on Discord. And today we're going to get into doing a little bit of texturing on this landscape. Uh, last one, we actually did the foam. So if we go down here, we can see the foam edge for the water. And now we're just going to throw in some textures. Uh, but before we start texturing the whole map, we're actually going to go through the texture system uh, and see how you can add for each one of these um, items, each one of these brushes, so you can get some custom stuff. And then you can also add anything else you want um, by hand, which um, a lot of this I'll most likely be doing by hand. Some of it I will add some splat maps and stuff like that, just to add some variety. Uh, I generally just do by hand because I'm just really used to it, but We'll go ahead and play with some of the maps anyway and see how all that works. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, last time we were messing with the ocean. Uh, we're not actually not going to even have the ocean on too much this time, uh, just so we can see the rest of the landscape. But before we do anything, since we did take the texture off the landscape on the last video, we do want to go ahead and make sure that in the landscape, and if we go to paint, we want to make sure that all of the textures that we have in our texture set have a texture assigned to them. Uh, I noticed some of mine were missing since I re-added it. So you want to go through each one of them. And if this is blank, then just go ahead. So if it is set to nothing, go ahead and open it and then get the one that it's supposed to be. LG, beef, and, and grass in this case. And you want to do all of those. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and start messing around with some of the textures itself. So we'll go back into the errant landscape. And right now I'm in G, so you can't see anything. Um, before I do that, let me go into selection. I'm going to get rid of the water so we can't see it. And we can see the rest of our landscape there. And then once again, we'll go back into uh, errant landscapes and push G so we can see all of our brushes and decide which ones we want to work on. So right now I'm actually going to mess with uh, quite a few of these deep underwater ones. We know that that's going to be sand. That's what we're going we're gonna to want that to be. And I know that all of those are the red ones. So if I go ahead and click on one here, we can go ahead into our sample pack uh, for the brush. And we have our height map. This is what we use to add the height map itself. So we're going to go down to where the texture is and we're just going to open up right there. That'll take you to the folder that this is in. And you can see several items here that we can use for splat maps and textures. So we are now open on that map, uh, that folder, so we can ha get those set up. We can go ahead and close up the height map now and open up the weight maps. And in the weight maps, we want to decide which textures we're going to use. Uh, the background textures do not seem to work with this. Uh, so we're going to have to use the foreground ones. So there's BG slash texture or underscore, and then there's also FG underscore texture. So in this instance, we know we want sand, so we're going to use the foreground, which is FG underscore sand. And we'll go ahead and open that up. And this is just like adding the, the uh, height maps and everything and adjusting the height maps. Height maps. We have a lot of the same functionality uh, so that we can control how the textures are going to work. So right here, we have a layering mode. So in single layer mode, we're going to get one texture that we can add. But if we wanted to add multiple textures, we could go to layered and we can add as many as we want, which will overlap on top of each other. And we're actually going to do that one. So I'm just going to do two. And the first one, uh, you know what? We're not going to do that on this one because this is going to be sand. It's going to take up most of it. We're actually going to delete that. We're just going to go to the single layer for this one. And since we have that folder that we opened a little while ago, you can push control shift to open the folder again. And this is not the asset I want to work on. This is the crack. I actually want the desert mountain ones. That's the ones I want. Let's go over here to the desert mountains. That's perfect. And we'll slide this back up and we're going to do the same thing. But here we're going to see the desert mountain one in the height map. So we can go ahead and open that up to bring up all of the items we can select. Go ahead and close that up. And in this height map, you can also duplicate these brushes and add height maps from world creator and Gaia stuff like that to create your own height maps and also your own uh, textures for splat maps and things like that 
So we're going to go ahead and close the height map, go into the weight map, open that up. We're going to do exactly the same thing we did a minute ago. We're going to make this one uh, the FG underscore sand with a capital S. And we'll open that one up. And we have our single layer mode, which is the one we're going to use. We're going to go into our texture. And now that we have that open again, we'll go control space to open our brush panel here. And we can grab the, we're actually going to use the height map itself because we can use that and invert it to get the textures where we want. So we're going to go ahead and drop that in. And once we do, you see we'll have a bunch of sand here that adds everything. And to control this a bit, let me go ahead and push G so we don't have all those grids in our way. So to control this, we have our sampling. So the UV scale really isn't going to work very well with this one since this is a map built off of this texture itself. Uh, if you had like a splat map or something like that and you wanted to tile it, you could use the UV scale and we'll probably do that here shortly. But for right now, we're just going to close up our sampling and go directly into our adjustments. This is where we'll actually adjust how this is interacting. And we have the contrast and multiply. These are the ones that we're going to use quite a bit to kind of fine tune it the way that we want. And of course, you can also invert it, which will do the top upper portion of the slope instead of the lower portion, which is not what we want. We actually want the lower portion. And we're going to pull up our contrast quite a bit and kind of bring this down into the ocean area. So we can bring that quite a bit more. We can actually, you can increase your multiply to get it a much heavier. You can reduce your multiply to be a little bit lighter, which we're actually going to do. And we're going to bring this down even more. So it's about like so. So we want this mostly to be all underwater. So if we go and open up the, this is landscape, that one there. Okay, so if we oh, if we turn on our water, we don't want to see it above the water line because we're going to do that by hand. So right now we're going to just continue manipulating this until we get it where it's just starting to peak above the water. So if we go all the way in like that, we'll start seeing it just starting to come up right there. And we can actually multiply a bit and then get it pretty much right where we want it. That's perfect. And then we can add what we need on top of that. That's that's great. So now what we can do, since we actually have that one done, let's go ahead and kill our water there. We can actually duplicate this onto the other ones uh, that are matching. So we have all of these large desert mountains are pretty much going to do the same thing. So all we have to do is we can just close our height map here, shift, right click on it to copy, and then we will select, uh, this is the one we were working on. Oh, we were working on this one right here. And we'll select all of them from under, from that one under, and close the height map, and we will just shift, right click, uh, left click, excuse me, on it, and that should fill in everything. And you'll see that some of them are not quite filled in completely. That's just because each one is using the exact same uh, multiply and contrast as the others, and some of them aren't going to work quite like that. So the best thing to do is just go through each one of them and set them to where you want so you're just just below the the, the water line that'll just get most of our sand done because we're not really going to worry about this too much anyway since this really isn't in this instance in this game playable area most of the playable area is going to be inside this area where the water is here as well but in larger scales you may want to do it slightly different on a much larger scale i personally would just paint it in because i have a little bit more control but that does take a lot of time. So I would use splat maps and stuff to just kind of get me a rough base and then everything else I would do by hand. But for right now, let's go ahead and call that good for this moment. And let's take a look at something else. So we have some, I think they were called flat mountains or I'm gonna go ahead and grab this spiky mountain, which is the one I should have had in the first place. And that's our top one. We'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll add in our weight maps. And oh, I can't add two because I have to add a key. Um, oh yeah, of course. Uh, this one is going to be, we were using the FG underscore forest. Let's use the thin grass. And these do have to be 
the exact same name convention as the ones that are in your landscape paint. So if you look here, you have the names, BG rock, BG underscore mud, BG underscore sand. Uh, these have to be typed out exactly the same or they will not work. Smooth hill, spiky mountain. All right, so we got our little spiky mountain here and we'll go ahead and open this one up and we'll add layered again, just like we did a minute ago. We'll add two layers. And let's see what we can do with this one. So we'll open up our texture parameter. We'll go back up to the height map so we can open the folder where these are contained right here. And we'll actually grab, let's do, let's do the flow right now. And we'll go here, add in the flow for the texture. And that was set to thin grass, just like so. And you can see the flow system there, which is very, very, very cool. This one actually works really well. So we're going to go ahead and hit the adjustments real quick. On this one, we're actually going to bring the contrast down a bit, bring the multiply up just a little bit, because we want this one to be very subtle, just barely there, just a whisper. Just about like that. That's about it. Maybe a little bit higher, just so they're a little bit cleaner so very cool and another thing that we can do with these so now that we have that one on we have a second layer let's close the layer we can add in something else like say a splat map so we can add in we'll type in clouds and if we go into clouds we'll find one right here called particle clouds which is amazing and that one will just add a bunch of splotches everywhere and this one's a little bit different. So this, since this one doesn't follow the curvature of the map, we can use a little bit more of the UVing and stuff to get it the way that we want it. So if we open up our adjustments and our sampling, in the adjustments, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the multiply just a little bit. We're also gonna drop the, uh, excuse me, we're gonna bring up the contrast just a bit so that they're there, but they have a little bit more of an edge to them. And then we can go up into our sampling here and we have a UV scale. And with the UV scale, we can add, we can add more to it. So we can go like say three by three and you'll see that we'll get a nice splat map like so, which is very, very cool. I think we can actually invert that. And is that's going to show the bounds. That is going to show the bounds. So we're having the bounds because we have the contrast with the multiply at a very low value. Yes, that is fine. So generally I would use these splat maps on the entirety of the map. So a lot of times whenever I build my maps, especially one that's not an island, I actually use a whole map underneath and I tile it to encompass the entire landscape. And then that's my splat map, um, basically the brush I use for it. So I bring the uh, details of that brush way down. So they're just barely there, just kind of like little tiny hills and valleys here and there. And then I use that one as my overall splat map. Because as you can see on this one, we do have an edge here, which we can get rid of, but we would have to duplicate this and then have one as the texture only and then the other one as the height map only. And then on the height, uh, the texture one, we can just use the mask to paint the area away that we don't want. But that actually will work just to showcase exactly how these work. So I'm going to remove this one. And we'll leave this nice one here, just like this. This actually even works very well here in the uh, ocean. Though we would not want to use forest or thin grass because if we are spawning biomes, we can have some issues there. But it's just to show you exactly how these do work. And we can do the same with say the craters. So the craters are underwater. And if we wanted them to be say, Go into our world, uh, our weight map here, 
go ahead and do the sand as we were. FG underscore sand. Oops. Just like so. Go ahead and hit this one. We'll do the same thing. We'll go to height map, go to textures, open up the creator so we can see what it looks like. And in the textures, this one we are going to use the height map, just like so. We're going to go down to the, the adjustments here, and we're going to invert it, just like that. And that's pretty much all we have to do on that one. And we can do the same thing with all the other craters around it to get the same uh, effect. And I think there's another one right here in the middle that we were using for... Ooh, I do have that one falling off. Uh, because of contrast on the edge. Uh, is that the right one? I think so. Yes, that's the right one. All right, so let's go ahead and just add a little more to this. And we'll just bring the multiply down. So with the contrast, we can actually bring the edges in more. So the higher we go, we can bring them in, but it also sharpens the image itself. So that's why I was kind of keeping that a little bit low because I don't want it. I want it to be soft, but I don't want to have that edge that we had. So if you go below one, you start getting the edge, the border. So as soon as you get to one and slightly above, you'll start losing that edge. I think we still have it just a little bit. And you can reduce your multiply also. So if I put up my multiply a bit higher, you'll see that it's very, very uh, noticeable. And I don't really want that. So let's go back a bit just to add a little more interest like so. And this is what I would do to just kind of add a little bit of deviation. And then most everything on top of that I would do by hand in most places. That's just kind of the way I like to do it. Um, it's easier for me. Uh, it's the way I've been doing it for a long time. But doing a large map, you can very quickly get a lot of this set up and complete it very quickly and then go in and do just your details by hand. And I think that that is going to work on this one. On the next video, I'll go ahead and I'll just completely get this landscape completely textured out so that we can get that, see how it looks like when it's done, go through a few things that I did when I did it. And then we will continue on on the next one. We will start actually getting into the biomes and discussing how we're going to run with those. We'll go through each one of the biome thing, uh, biome items, the species and all that stuff, because that's actually going to take a bit of time. Those are actually uh, a lot involved in those. And then once we get done with that, we'll start working on to the paths and adding in some trails and things like that and seeing how that works all right so i am going to call it on this one and i will see you guys on the next one